All right, guys, when we last left off, I had just finished polishing the Grumman, and I was getting ready to put it all together for the last time. So let's just go from there. All right, I'm getting the countertops installed. I've already got this front one in here. As you can see, the cabinets are all painted black. I just shot it with a, a coat of like a satin black to kind of even everything out. It's looking pretty good. So once I get the other uh, countertop in, I'll be able to do the electrical and we'll get some lighting in here. All right, this is how it's looking now on the inside. You see I got those four lights with the Edison bulbs, got the outlet there, and I've got another outlet here for the fridge. Let me show you what it looks like from the outside. Pretty good. I think the next step is going to be installing all this glass in the front now. So I'll go ahead and get that set up and do that now. So the audio is missing on this file here, but I do remember that it took about four hours to do the glass on just that one side. And then this side here takes about three hours to do. It was a real pain in the rear end. Whenever you're using that new rubber weather stripping, it's just really difficult to work with, but got it done. All right, the next step is to fix the headlight buckets. You can see this one is a little bit damaged, but both of them are pretty cracked all over. So what I'm going to do is use a like a Bondo with the fiberglass. So it's like the short strand fiberglass repair kit, and I'll, I'll fill in all these little cracks and bits of damage, and then sand it down, paint it, we'll be good to go. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do on the headlight bucket is get this piece glued back in. I could use the uh, fiberglass repair, but it, it, I think it'll be a little bit easier to just use this quick glue. You guys may have seen this. This is like that little powdered glue. Well, it's like a it's a powder, and then you have a glue that comes with it, and you, you sprinkle the powder on, and then you drip the glue, and uh, it works pretty good. I've seen a lot of ads for it, and in the ads, it always works better than it does in real life, uh, but it's good for holding something temporarily. Oh. All right, here's the Grumman in the paint booth. I'm getting ready to paint the roof black. The customers have decided on jet black. So that's what we're going with. So first things first, I gotta get a good etching primer on the aluminum. So I'll do that now. So the primer went on really well. It's looking good. Now getting ready for the black. All right, I've got all the black on it. It looks pretty good. This was by no means a show quality paint job. Just something real simple, straightforward. I just used a single stage gloss black. I think I used Speedo Coat. And they're pretty good. They're, uh, they're on the lower end, of course, you know, for the price. But it's a good product. It bonds really well and it lasts a long time.
All right, I've got the two headlight buckets in. I just used large headed number eight screws. Gives it kind of a cool look. I had to make a few little brackets because I couldn't find uh, which housings for the headlights they actually used back in the day on these Grumman's. So I just used some headlight buckets from an old Jeep that ended up working. They're new reproductions, of course, but let me just get the uh, chrome rings installed and we'll be good to go. I just have this one polished up and I've got the other side to do next. All right, guys, the last thing I have to do on the Grumman here before I do its final cleaning and send it out on its way is to fix this roof. Now, if you see here, the ceiling on the inside, it's a little bit ugly. It's got this repair right here, and then you can see some of the uh, uh, markings from where it had glue rolled on before it had its insulation. Of course, that was all originally hidden because it had a lower ceiling on the inside, but that was destroyed, so I had to remove it. What I'm going to do now is create an aluminum inner ceiling here, and that's going to sharpen it up a little bit. I'll try and do it similar to this brush style that I did the inside of the door. And the way I'm going to do it is by cutting out these, uh, cutting up rather, these sheets of 4x8 and 4x10 aluminum. I think it's 22 gauge. And then I'll do it basically in little sheets, and then I'll be able to mount them up to the existing spars. And then, uh, she should be looking pretty sharp and good to go. So let's get on that now. All right, check out the front end now. It's looking awfully sharp with that grill in it. Uh, front bumper matches up perfect. I ended up painting the frame rails just to make it look a little bit cleaner. Still need to polish that grill, but uh, it's really close here. What I'm working on on this side, I just finished polishing this top area. You can see it came out really clear. There were a couple little streaks left in it, but I was able to use just the uh, cotton pad and get rid of those. If you notice right here, this little section, boy, this is uh, just a pain in the rear with all these little uh, nuts and bolts here. So what I'm going to do, uh, you can see all these bolts are all basically bent and broken. I'm gonna grind these off. I'm gonna hammer this piece off. I'll polish this on a table. It'll make it a lot easier. And then I'll uh, cut these out and then I'll replace them with those carriage bolts. And I think that that'll give me a chance to polish this up without having, you know, the kind of dark smudges and whatnot. Otherwise, I think it's pretty much uh, good to go. All right, I got this all polished up and swapped out those carriage bolts. Looks much nicer. Got the interior all set up. Oh, I installed the door. I don't think I showed you guys that or these taillights. Taillights are real cool looking. But here's the door, it's all installed. It's got the cool logo in the bottom. And uh, I'm really impressed with how it works. See, if you remember back in, I think episode one or two, I had to install this without any, uh, with just that old, old door. So I didn't have any instructions on how to make a door for it. So the door is totally made from scratch and uh, came out real sharp, I think. Alrighty, here is the next project. It's a 1959, I believe, Grumman Olsen van. And this one has a Ford chassis. I believe it's called a P350 chassis, where Ford basically delivered the one-ton chassis to Grumman, who then put the uh, coachworks on it. So the plan is I'm gonna cut out a large section here, and I'm gonna put in like a 10-foot door that opens up, or a window rather, that then uh, we'll turn this into a mobile bar. 
So I think it's looking pretty good so far. It's going to be a good starting platform. All right, here she is, all done and basically ready for delivery. Let me do a little walk around here. If you remember, obviously, we did the service window. All new glass and rubber all the way around. A new bumper that was designed for uh, the rear of a Chevy pickup truck, uh, 47 to 55. But look at how close that matches. Gives it a real nice look, matches the factory grill. And then uh, the headlight buckets were fiberglass repaired, and then I sprayed them with a texture and then uh, paint. Over here we've got the custom door. If you remember, the original one was made out of plywood and it was jammed shut when I got it. I was able to roll this logo into it. And then uh, I did what looks like a window delete here because they haphazardly cut out a giant hole in the side, which we didn't know until it was sandblasted. And so I got all the ribbing done just right to make it look like that's how it came. In the rear, real straightforward. Just uh, sanded everything down, polished it. We did have that one repair. Of course, that's still noticeable because we did bring it down to the polish. A couple of little custom pieces here with uh, the factory taillights back in it. Bed lined the rear bumper. Let's go in the interior. Oh, the electrical right there, it's already hooked up. So you guys can see the new lights. So the floor is all bed lined, cabinets are all bed lined. Here's all the Edison lights on. And they're off, you see. They're LED Edison bulbs, they only use three watts a piece. The custom ceiling is all hand brushed aluminum. The countertops, that's that custom gray stain with an automotive clear coat so you can see how shiny it is. Nice and water resistant. Over here, of course, the service window, sink, and a bucket with an electrical outlet here for a refrigerator and then maybe your cell phone chargers as well. Have another courtesy outlet here right next to the switch. Here's the service window, open this up. So this is what the bartenders will see. Over here, pretty straightforward, simple gauges. All the lights are on one switch just to turn them on. And then just the necessary gauges there. And then let me show you what it looks like from the outside with the window up. So this is what people see when they walk up to it. Real sharp looking, I think. I'm proud of this thing. I think she came out real nice. So there you have it. 1958 Grumman with the Ford powertrain turned into a mobile bar. Ta-da! All right guys, that's it for the Grumman. She's been delivered and the garage is empty. Now, I did this one for a client of mine, so I can't tell you exactly what I charged, but I'm very interested to know what you guys think I charged. So let me know in the comments below what you think it costs to take a 1958 Grumman and turn it into a polished mobile bar. Now, the next project is probably gonna be the trophy truck. I'm still finishing up my Dodge, but I really wanna get back to that trophy truck, so that's what I'm aching to finish. Uh, now that the Grumman is gone, I should have that opportunity, but I don't know exactly which order I'm gonna be doing these videos moving forward. So hopefully you stay tuned. I've got some real cool projects moving forward, and I'll see you guys next week. Take care.